So I'm going to start this video off talking about the uh, primary level of protein structure, sometimes abbreviated as one with a little not sign next to it. And because this is really just an arbitrary man-made classification system, there's not a clear consensus on what exactly constitutes primary level protein structure versus what actually uh, constitutes other protein structures. And so I'm going to present both of the definitions and I'll give you my criticism of each of them. The one that I prefer is to define primary level protein structure as just the linear amino acid sequence of the protein. And the reason why I really love this definition more than the other ones is, is that the linear amino acid sequence is really what enables us to, at least in some part, make a prediction on what the three-dimensional model is going to be. Um, this is the biological relationship that it has, and this linear directionality of the protein is actually what determines the types of chemistry that it's going to have. And just for giggles, when we say linear, what I usually mean is that we are running in some type of a direction from an N terminus, usually to a C terminus. So let me just give you an example that kind of illustrates this point uh, home. Um, when I say that the linear amino acid sequence determines the chemistry, I mean that if you were to have a protein, let's say that this is the N termini here, and its amino acid sequence was, I don't know, tyrosine, followed by maybe a glycine, maybe uh, another glycine, and then maybe let's just say, I don't know, phenylalanine, and then there's the C terminus. And then let's just say that you had another protein that, starting with its N terminus, was uh, basically the same thing as this, but we're going in a different directionality. So we're going to start off with phenylalanine, followed by a glycine, glycine, and then another tyrosine, and then there's your N termini. These two proteins would have totally different uh, chemical properties from the N to C and N to C. Their, their sequence is the same, but the directionality is different. And because the directionality is different, they would have different chemical uh, properties within them. And that's really kind of an important theme. I'm just going to draw a not sign there. That's a really important theme in biology. Anytime you have something that is asymmetric, which, which most biomolecules are, they have a unidirectionality, which means that they're asymmetric. And that asymmetry is usually used to convey some type of information uh, in some way, shape, or form. I know that's a little abstract, but it will hopefully make more sense, especially when you start to talk uh, about other stuff like developmental biology. So this is the linear amino acid sequence. What holds it in place? Well, this is held in place uh, structurally by chemical bonds known as peptide bonds. Yes, yes, I know my handwriting is really, really bad. I'm actually switching to this video format with the markers because the pen drawing software is, is just so, so hard to read. So you may or may not already know what peptide bonds are, but I'm just going to go ahead and just illustrate what they are. It's, it's basically a, a resonating carbonyl atom with a nitrogen attached to it. And if you look back to, like, say, for example, my organic chemistry videos, uh, I talked a little bit about carbonyl compounds and how whatever it is that this thing that's next to the carbonyl compound, the stronger of a base it is, the more it contributes to the resonance structure. And since an NH2 or an NR2 is a really strong base, this guy contributes pretty strong to the resonance structure. Um, and so there's some notes that we want to make about this would be the types of the geometry it is and then how it's made. It tends to have a mostly planar geometry. As you can imagine, this is sp2, but if I were to draw the hybrid, I could certainly make that nitrogen atom have a trigonal planar geometry as well. So these are unusually flat type of molecules. Because this bond here, can, I could easily draw the resonance structure for it, it is, they, they tend to have a trans configuration. You will never really see a cis <laughs> peptide bond. That's why I'm laughing, because it seems so unrealistic to ever happen. And like most biomolecules, it is, it is synthesized by dehydration synthesis. So taking the water out of it is how we form a peptide bond. Removal of the water gives us the peptide bond. Kind of looks ugly. Should have done better. Okay, so that's my preferred definition of primary level protein structure. And the reason why I prefer it so much is it, again, enables us to make predictions and it lends itself to the relationship between the types of bonds and their biological role. However, there's another way that we can define protein structure, which is what you kind of get whenever you work with protein structures in labs, which is a definition that I don't like, but it's that we would define it as the sum total of all covalent interactions within the peptide. So using this definition, obviously that's also going to include peptide, bond, peptide bonds, but it's also going to include other things that aren't mentioned as far as the linear amino acid sequence. This includes disulfide bonds, 
post-translational modification, and then cleavage products. And I'm going to talk about each and every one of these maybe later on in a video or maybe give them their own video by themselves. Just to kind of really, I guess, reiterate what these mean, a disulfide bond is something that we formed uh, by the oxidation or reduction um, of cysteine. Um, it's just very important in terms of playing a role for the tertiary structure, which is why I don't like mentioning it in this, this, this diction that we're using here. Post-translational modification also is something that we would consider part of primary level protein structure. And I'll talk about each of those in their own video. And then lastly, proteolytic cleavage products. So let's say you have an enzyme that cuts up a, a certain protein. Well, the individual fragments that that, of that protein that were cut up by that enzyme would be considered primary level protein structure.